All right, everybody, awesome news. Podcasts have been going really well. People are really enjoying the episodes here about reloading and long range shooting. So we're gonna combine those two topics into a series of podcasts and take people on an adventure, two complete reloading noobs, and throwing them in the full process, start to finish, documenting that, and ultimately throwing them to the wolves at the Vortex Extreme long range shooting match with those reloads. Jim, sounds great, love it. Who are we gonna get to do it? Us. Mark, it's, it's us. Uh, Jim, no, absolutely not. I'll shoot the extreme, I'll run it, I'm not reloading. No questions, that's it. I won't do it. No, Mark, I get it. Reloading doesn't sound like my cup of tea either, but people are really, what are you doing? Jim, they come per 20, I just added 20. But if you order them online already loaded, that's not the point. People aren't gonna get- 20. You just, you're kinda- How many do we need? 300. Got them. They're on their way. It's done. It's done. Yeah, it's done. It's why they make them, Jim. It's why they make them. Yeah, you know, Mark, I'm glad you finally came around to the idea. It's gonna be fun. Mmm. Mmm. Mmm, mmm. What's that, buddy? Mmm. Yeah, me too, me too. All right, day two of reloading now. We've loaded four rounds, as you can see, during the semi-live podcast yesterday. And uh, coming into today, apparently feeling confident enough to just start ripping out another 45. So we're going to try and do this without the pro here. See what happens. Probably gonna end up calling him in about two minutes. Pretty much two minutes on the dot. I already called Ryan McInerney because if you know what grain you're gonna be loading or whatever for the powder, you should probably write it down somewhere. There we go. Okay, small little hiccup. The rest of it I'm sure is gonna go just fine. Now in another two minutes, I've discovered what could be an issue, maybe not an issue, I don't know. But we were seeing that when we were measuring off the SoJive with the micrometer, or the bow caliper, that I was off consistently about two to three thousandths. I'm not overly concerned about it. A little variance is okay, it's not gonna be like the end of the world. If you were like 20 off, that would be a big one. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right, and I finished this first batch. These are all within a thou on the overall length according to that thing. These, these are all 0.3 to 0.5 thou off. 0.5 is the max. 0.3 is where I started with putting these in. So these are all basically as good as they get. These are just a smidge long. Okay, Mr. Ryan with the ever quick thinking thought, why don't we just measure the actual bullets without the case attached to them. And so we actually stuck a number of different bullets in this dial caliper here to see if there was any variance going on in those. And they were all really consistent. There was hardly any variance going on in there. He suggested that if it were him, he'd just bump these ones just a smidge deeper to get to our spec there of that 0.95. So that's just what we did. We just came down about three thousandths. And as you can see now, this is one of those cartridges down there, very, very much and it's right on the money, so. I don't even know if the camera's gonna be capable of picking this up, but this primer sticks out ever so slightly, very, very slightly. And so that's what's actually causing the overall length of this to be a, bit, a little bit longer. And in fact, you can really kind of show it when you set it down on the table. See how wobbly it is? Compared to this cartridge right here, which does not have its primer sticking out. See how it uh, kind of stays itself out a lot more quickly than this one? That one stays wobbly. Whereas this one, you bump it, jiggles, and then it immediately sorts itself out. Always something to keep an eye on. This is why you gotta be paying attention when you're reloading. All right, Mark. We got these things sighted in with the factory ammo, and we even have some more brass now to load up. What do you say uh, we actually send some of our loads down there? That's a risk I'm willing to take, Jim. Let's do it. We've got one. 
loaded up. We're on safe right now. Uh, pretty soon we're not gonna be on safe. We don't have Ryan here. Uh, I wonder if that was strategic on his part. Yeah, it's weird he wasn't available. Yeah, he's strange. Available. Um, not gonna put these in just in case. Actually, got one in the chamber though. Call the fire department. <laughs> it might make sense, just in case. Okay, uh, we're gonna do this. First round down the pipe. Oh, that was scary. That was the scariest time I've ever taken a gun off, off safe. Do I even want to be behind this thing? Like I am? Okay. Here we go. Sending. Uh, pretty soon. Okay, I got... <laughs> Probably shouldn't have reacted the way that I did. I didn't plan that, actually. <laughs> In my head, I was picturing a violent explosion. I definitely flinched. Um, wow. We are just touching the little black circle down there at 100 yards that's this big. You're joking me. No, no, even with that flinch. <laughs> I think we can send a couple more down. Mark, I think it's even safe for you to send a couple down. We'll give her a try. Here's my group with, uh, that's factory. Okay. And then here's my group, also considering my first shot was like a gigantic flinch, um, with our hand loads. So it's shooting like it should. It's pretty like impressive, Jim. I think these are my, uh, these are my last two. That was my first one. Right. Uh, so, you know, essentially king of the two shot group here, like Mark. Uh, just gonna come up a smidge and over the right a smidge, and I think we can actually be punching out that little black circle. Let's give her, Jim, let's give her a shot. <sighs> I oh hate to say gosh. it, but this is kind of fun. So at this point in time, you've seen us discuss reloading, what all you need. We've actually reloaded some of our own ammunition, but you may notice we're not out in Wyoming just yet. That's because we found one of the few places in the state of Wisconsin where we can shoot out to about a thousand yards, and we're gonna test our rigs that we're gonna be shooting at the Vortex Extreme here with some of this ammunition that we've loaded with the help of Mr. Ryan Muckiner, who's joining us today. And uh, hopefully what we'll find is that here in Wisconsin, these shoot pretty dang good. We do have to chronograph as well. We wanna get a general idea of the muzzle velocity that are gonna be coming out of these guns here. Uh, because then we'll set up our whole ballistics calculator. We can tweak it again when we get to Wyoming. Uh, but we got the mosquito speed, as Mark calls it, otherwise known as the magneto speed out here. Gonna get, uh, hopefully we're running some pretty consistent muzzle velocities. This is in fact, this Ruger American's fourth Vortex Extreme. So earlier, Ryan attached the magneto speed. Now this is a pretty handy dandy chronograph. They're super accurate. Ryan, you take generally what, three readings? Three to five. Three to five readings, get an average, and then you should have a, uh, a really good velocity to enter in your ballistics calculator. 677. Twenty-six fifty-one. All right. That one was twenty-six fifty-nine. Now, is that enough rounds to fire in order to get a decent average? I think so. Yeah. I mean, five, the, the, the six, more. I guess. I mean, anytime you do more, you're just going to compile more data and you can further refine it. But I think for what we're doing, it's probably more than adequate. So Mark's rifle definitely differs from mine quite a bit. Ordinarily, if we're shooting a partner event like this, you know, it might be nice to be shooting the same gun. But in this case, for the sake of time, yeah, we're just going to run with that one. Mine is a relatively inexpensive Ruger American, as we've mentioned, in 6.5 Creedmoor. Shoots pretty good. It's obviously been through a number of Vortex Extremes. But Mark, what are you working with over there? So this is a rifle from Seekins Precision. Both these rifles are in 6.5 Creedmoor, so the nice thing about that in this team event is we're both shooting the same cartridge so we can share ammo if needed. And we should have pretty similar results. I'll put one dollar down that mine shoots faster than Mark's. <laughs> Mark, I think you owe me a dollar. So at that five shot string, Mark's average was 26.48 with a standard deviation of about 11 feet per second, which is pretty darn good. Um, 
so yeah we'll take that average of 26.48 you do owe jim a dollar uh, and uh, we'll plug that into the calculator mine's faster than yours <laughs> jim uh i lied i can't cover that bet <laughs> Sorry. We gotta validate these now. We have an average muzzle velocity. Now we just gotta actually see when we shoot it and we use that muzzle velocity in our ballistics calculators to spit out what we're supposed to dial at different distances if it's actually right. If it's not, we'll make the correction as needed and then hopefully we'll be good to go. That's where I was aiming. So I'm gonna give that another 10. So did we go to 5.2? Yeah. All right. Looks like we have a target at 700 if you wanna do some long range stuff. Holy mirage. There's a bit out there. Let me try to read it for you. It's all going left to right. Tune your parallax to roll through that. There's a, there's a left to right and there's a right to left out there. So I need to dial 5.1. Okay. Spot her up. So this is part of validating, right? Yep. Our calculator is spitting out a theoretical value that we should have dialed which in this case we did dial and we hit the target so in practice that was pretty close but also as we've seen now in the real world uh we're seeing a slight discrepancy so i'm hitting a little bit lower than we would think i should be hitting and so what we can actually do is go out and see about how much lower i'm hitting than i think i should be hitting based on what the ballistics calculator thinks i should be doing and uh then using that discrepancy we can tweak the muzzle velocity a little bit to then match what we're actually seeing in real life. So hopefully once we do that tweak, this is all part of the validation, now what our ballistics calculator is spitting out, we've essentially given it more accurate information to what's happening in real life rather than theoretical. And so hopefully then the rest of our information will be more accurate. We just finished up, we shot our guns at, at distance, we validated our data. So essentially we made sure that we had good numbers, good dope, whatever you wanna call it. So when we shot downrange at respective distances, I think we shot a total out to 1040, yeah. getting some solid impacts. Uh, made a few adjustments in our ballistic calculator from what we actually had originally, and then what we saw downrange. But pretty tough shooting conditions today, a lot of mirage, but I think we're set and we're going to get as close as we're going to get until we get to Wyoming, Jim. Ammo shoots good. Gun shoots good. Uh, both of our guns shoot good. We shoot okay-ish. Probably yeah. always need to work on that. And the conditions were pretty tough today with all the mirage, but feeling pretty good for Wyoming. Yeah. That's a wrap. Yep. Until We were Wyoming. also under adult supervision by Ryan Muckinern, and that, that was much helps. appreciated. I am fearful. When Thanks, he Dad. Welcome to Wyoming and the Wagon Hound Ranch, which is the scene of the Vortex Extreme. We're just shy of 6,000 feet of elevation, already kind of feeling it in the lungs here a little bit. And that means that essentially, if you really boil it down to the simplest form, the air is thinner, there's lower pressures here, the bullet is gonna fly through the air with less resistance. So that means it has less time, it's being affected by gravity, so we're probably gonna have to change our dope a little bit. And that's what we're gonna validate out here before we actually go out and shoot a competition with these guns. Right now we have, I think, a 700 yard, and Nick was saying that we're gonna validate out to 1230. I actually don't know if I've ever shot that far before in my entire life, come to think of it. Impact, woo! Nice hit, Jim. You look pretty centered up, too. Yeah. Mark you up. I am ready. All right, spot her on. Impact hey, first shot. Nice. Heck yeah, Jim. Nice work, Mark. That's a good feeling, day one. <laughs> we did capture all the footage of that mirage happening at the range when we were back in Wisconsin. It is incredible to see this, the targets so much more clearly out here with almost no mirage. All right, Nick, what were you getting for a range there? I got 1270. So it's the target to the left of the one you just engaged. It's just on the top of that little knob. Oh. There it's it like between two trees, right? Yep. They're all between two trees. <laughs> They're all between two trees. Oh, that one hit just off the left or off the right. All right. So I'm going to send it then again. So give it about another half a plate of wind. I'm just going to put my crosshair right on the pole because I was pretty close to that. Impact. <laughs> 1200 dude that that's Jim. 
That is the farthest I've ever shot. Right there. And Jim, you are centered right up on that plate too. Right, right on that pole is where I had it. So I think that your dope is good. Ammo we loaded ourselves. Absolutely amazing. That is crazy. Shooter ready. I'm gonna do the same hold as you, Jim. Okay. Yep, just to the right. All right, so give her a little bit more wind then. Do you have your center crosshair right on that post, Mark? Right on the post. Part of this is, number one, probably got a little bit of a hot barrel right now. Number two, changes are happening constantly as we're shooting. Number three, that's 1,200 yards. Number four, these are uh, cartridges that we loaded ourselves. Yeah, that's probably <laughs> the biggest caveat. <laughs> Oh, yeah. that was just left of it. That one just right. <laughs> the hell's going on out there? Mind if I take a quick shot, Mark? Let it rip. Just Straight low. low. That threaded uh, cap is on securely too. Which threaded cap? Oh. No, it wasn't. Okay. Now is that going to have an impact? It could. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I just thought of that. S but... O B. Hold on a second. We just now retuned your barrel <laughs> by screwing that thing down. Send one more. Let's Good. verify, and we'll go from there. Right over the right shoulder would be my guess on that, from what I could tell. Impact. Impact. Lower there right we edge go. of the plate. Bottom right corner. Our and velocity is a little bit slower, but not dramatically. You're at 2620. Okay. Actually, 2627 technically, so closer to 2630, which you're at 2640 with your rifle. And we confirmed yours is good. So that would explain why you said that the velocities were really close. I mean, and, but if we dial the same dope and he just always holds but barely a smidge higher than I do. It would probably work. It's just up to us and the wind. And hopefully, reading the wind, which is always tricky. That is. It's the fun part. <laughs> well, next up, the extreme. That's all that's left? I was gonna actually have a more impactful ending, but that was all I could say. <laughs> I don't know, the extreme is impactful enough. Extreme. 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 Everybody say extreme. Extreme. Nick, give me an extreme. Nick. Extreme. Say extreme. Oh, God, that was... Wait, say it one more time. Was that too extreme? I'm sorry. Extreme. Yeah, like the movie guy. Yeah, that was pretty good. <laughs> or say it like the uh, the Quiznos I've Got a Pepper Bar guys. Say oh, yeah, yeah. that way. I have no idea what you're talking Shoot about. Shoot the extreme! <laughs> yes. <laughs> they got a pepper bar! <laughs> yeah. Quiznos rats. Everybody knows those guys. Next year we'll have a pepper Except for bar. Me, apparently. It's time to begin the Vortex Extreme. Got up before the butt crack of dawn, and uh, with any luck, these reloads, Mark, will continue performing the way they have been. Yes, Jim, we've effectively reloaded our way to the Vortex Extreme. Now it's time to start the Vortex Extreme. <sighs> I keep saying it's the only thing left, but really it's the only thing left. There's no other thing to do but just go. Just go, man. All right. Hey, Jim. Are you ready? <laughs> yeah, let's go. Okay. Extreme. Here we go. There it Stage is. Numero uno. On our way. Does anyone else have skid marks? Yet? Yeah. Skid marks? Yeah. No, I wiped pretty good after okay. I took a Just when you think you're to the top, that happens. I'm on target, Mark. This is gonna be super unfortunate if this mag actually doesn't work. Okay. Oh, what the hell happened there? We're at a 2.3. Impact. Impact. Just 
this tire right. Oh, this tire right. This tire right again. Something's. Next target is 3.8. I'm on it. Okay, go for it. Nice shot. Thanks. You're on the left edge of the target. I mean the right edge of the target. Right edge of the target was where you hit. Okay. That one missed right. Hey, that's your time, gentlemen. Thank you, guys. All right. Well, probably not the best display of shooting. Still working out the kinks. Working out the kinks, Jim. Hey. In the last couple of Vortex Extremes, my first stage, I haven't had a single hit. Which is kind of embarrassing to admit, but that one had one. Yeah, we broke the ice. Both had one hit each, and uh, go up from there, hopefully. Too early to start blaming the ammo. Mark, ever quick to start blaming the gear, failed to realize that his parallax was set at infinity the entire stage, and uh, we were definitely not shooting much further beyond 500 and I know for a fact on that scope you have a 500 mark on that parallax knob so when you're missing to the right and we're shooting from these crazy positions thanks for the advice Jim everybody knows parallax is a myth shooting position at this next one suck what's the plan on this next stage uh, the plan set your parallax at least somewhat decently try to establish a Semi-decent shooting position. Let them rip. Cut. Approaching stage three. Beautiful morning out here. The sun's coming up in the background. You guys can probably tell that. Jim's making a quick adjustment here before we approach the third stage of the day and uh awesome day so far oh, i might as well keep that out the reloads have been going bang i don't think the steel's working though jim what do you think yeah i think they put out smaller steel last night not regulation size well we got some long bombs here too learned a valuable lesson don't change up your magazine the night before the extreme without any prior experience with the magazine it very well may not feed into your rifle and you very well may end up having to hand feed with your finger every round into the chamber out of the magazine which is proving to be already kind of a bloody mess all right let's go so the last thing was like get, give us a minute <laughs> you guys got your card on you shooter two ready Send it, they're ready. Good hit, good hit. All right, now shooter one is good. Good hit. Just right. Barely right. Nothing. Something like this will just make you want a little mushroom and Swiss. Jim, don't touch it. Look at, no, this is literally like what you get in the grocery store. I don't think it's the same one, Jim. Mmm. -hmm. Try it. Yeah? <laughs> no. You're right, it felt a little bit weird. I'm, I'm not sure that was. It looks just like the old mushroom and Swiss. You know, let's uh, switch gear up the night before. Let's eat unidentified mushrooms. We'll just kind of really go for it. Full send. Full send. Approaching number five, halfway point kind of gym. Shooting wise. Shooting wise. We're getting there. We're getting there. Reloads have hit a few targets. Yeah, we know we can hit targets. I think I, I don't think it's the ammo. I don't think it's the equipment. I think we just gotta hit. I tell you targets. what's getting me is like. I think like, our dope might be a little funny. Yeah, but we don't have kestrels. We don't. We're just we're we're kind of bare bones in it a little bit. We're bare bones in it. 
but no excuses. I mean, these are tough shooting positions. They're awkward, you know, I mean, if you don't have, you know, the perfect setup, you're having to improvise a little bit and you're definitely not stable like you would be, you know, if you're just setting up and had all day to shoot from your perfect little spot. What this has made me realize is that being that the Vortex Extreme tries to mimic hunting scenarios, if I were hunting and I saw a deer within 300 yards, I'd take the shot. Yeah. If I saw one beyond 300 yards and I didn't have a Kestrel on me like I don't have now, I wouldn't take the shot. Shooter two is ready. Spot is ready. All right, send it whenever. Okay, don't move the log. Hi, right. Oh, I totally effed you on that one. That was right. completely my fault. Yeah. All right, now you're going to 3.7. Hi. Beer elevation was right, just off the right. Yeah. Come on. All right, we're just coming off stage five. We're at the halfway point. At least at the halfway point of uh, shooting at these targets for me, Jim. <laughs> Not hitting a lot. Yeah, the thing is that we know these rifles shoot. We know the ammo shoots. We know the scopes work well. We've already shot out to 1260. We shot out to 1190. We've shot out to all kinds of distances back home and here. This is just another aspect of the pod venture, right? I mean, we didn't just reload ammo and then just sit around with our thumbs up our rears at the range, shoot a couple times at a long distance, take five minutes to reload once. I mean, we literally have eight whole minutes to shoot eight shots each, transitioning between targets, trying to find targets, trying to look through our scope spot for each other. I'm trying to load, uh, hand load ammo from my magazine. It won't sled load, it won't load from the magazine. It's just a complete mess right now, which is why you shouldn't change magazines last minute the night before without ever testing them. Um, it's just, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna not have fingers by the end of the day. I think it comes down to, you know, you can do all these things and you get the numbers and you get the dope chart. You gotta practice and you gotta practice with the gear that you're gonna be using, right? And the only time you really find this stuff out is when you're doing stuff like this. Yep. This thing. Hey! 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 God! Hey! God you this magazine, don't do this on face. me again. Get back! Get back! Get back! Come on, you piece of shit. Get back! Come on. Impact! I can't believe I hit that. Hit it. Impact. There you go. Come on, Ruger. Give me Same one more. Impact! Woo! Woo! Good shooting, Jim. <sighs> Sorry to people watching for my language. From A, there's a B right there with, with two little bricks. Oh man, I already don't like this. Oh my gosh, dude. Good hit, Jim. All right, now three. Dial three.
Good hit. Bottom right edge of plate, Jim. Okay. Ah, sh A little bit high. A little high. First way down, tougher okay. on this Second incline the with these sticks than I thought it was going to be. I actually wish I probably would have laid down with my bipod. Yeah. That's a cool live and learn. Mark? Send some of these down your neck. This right here is a reloader's chip. Because you know what? They took an average chip and they weren't satisfied with it. The factory chip. They added in a great deal of spices and herbs and things and they made what to them is probably a better chip. I haven't, I haven't tried these yet, but dips in the chips. So. They appear, at least from the picture, to look fully loaded. Yeah. <laughs> fully loaded. Oh, look at that. That's a, you're not coming back from that bag, Rev. Nope. Oh yeah. That's spice to the max. Well, we are now happily back home from the Vortex Extreme. And if there is any usable footage from Nate here, our camera guy, of uh, Mark and I shooting that isn't laced with profanity from me yelling at my rifle because I made the error of using probably an incorrect magazine. Then you saw that actually we did indeed hit some targets out there in Wyoming at the extreme. And uh, Mark, what'd you think? Well, number one, Jim, I think the footage is gonna be great because it is laced with emotion <laughs> and profanity. Uh, what did I think? Uh, I think it went well. I think I was pleasantly surprised that with some help from our in-house friends, Ryan Muckenhern, and a lot of know-how, uh, we were able to complete our task of reloading to the Vortex Extreme. Exactly. I think we did just that. Now, the biggest thing we need to answer, for those who've watched along and have also listened along in the pod venture, uh, is would we do it again? Absolutely, Absolutely not. not. No. Ever. N under no circumstance, factory for life. Yes, correct. That was such a royal pain in the butt. Not going to do it. No. So. Is this when I can talk about how the 300 WSM is the best cartridge ever made? N no, Mark. The, the video's over now. Thanks for watching, everybody. Pretty good. No problem. It's got tomato and avocado in it. There's a lot going on there. I know. I know. This is a this is like a this is like a hot six five cream where somebody loaded this hot. To the gills. And they they put in the tomato and avocado until they found the node. This is like a 6.5 pre going 32.50. Mm-hmm.